Here I have a sketch with two circles and two arcs. I'll use these sketch entities to demonstrate some additional sketch relations that are specific to curved profiles. The first sketch relation is the co-radial option, which constrains two circular sketch entities to share a common radius. I'll select the two arcs in the graphics area, and the make co-radial sketch relation appears first in the context toolbar. I'll select this option, and the arcs reposition to have a common center point with the same radius. I'll undo this relation and move on to the next relation type. Another relation specific to curved sketch entities is the concentric option. This relation sets the center point of the selected sketch entities to be coincident. To demonstrate this relation, I'll select both circles and select Make Concentric from the Context toolbar. The circles update and share a common center point. I'll undo this relation and I'll also apply this relation to the arcs. These appear similar when I applied the co-radial relation. However, if I drag one of the arc segments, the arcs still share a common center but have different radii. I'll undo this relation and move on to the tangent option. The tangent sketch relation can be applied between two curved sketch entities. I'll select a circle and an arc and click the Make Tangent button from the context toolbar. The arc updates and becomes tangent to the circle. If I drag an endpoint on the arc, notice that the arc remains tangent along the circle, but the tangent point changes. The tangent relation can also be applied to other sketch elements, such as a line and a circle. I'll draw a line in the graphics area. Select this line in a circle and select Make Tangent. The sketch entities move and update according to the added relation, and if I move the endpoint of the line, the arc, the circle and the line all maintain their tangent relations while being modified. I'll undo these sketch relations and remove the line by clicking the Undo button. And move on to one more sketch relation. The equal relation can be used to set circles and arcs radii equal to one another. The difference between this option and the co-radial relation is that co-radial sets the radius and the center point equal for both entities, while the equal option only makes the radius values equal. I'll select all four sketch entities in the graphics area. Select the equal relation from the context toolbar, and all four sketch entities update and have the same radius value. However, because the Equal option was selected, rather than the Co-Radial option, none of the sketch entities were constrained to share a center point. There are more advanced types of sketch relations available in SOLIDWORKS that can be applied, such as the Intersection, On-Surface, and Pierce relations. These relations will occur in specific instances while creating sketches and features. However, the sketch relations shown in this lesson cover the majority of the relations needed to create fully defined sketch profiles in SOLIDWORKS. This sketch is comprised of two lines that have no relations or dimensions added. I will use these two lines to demonstrate how to add sketch relations. Sketch relations can only be added while in Edit Sketch mode. Additionally, if a sketch tool is currently in use, such as drawing a center point arc, Sketch relations can only be added using automatic relations, which is covered in another lesson. The first type of relation I will create is the coincident relationship, which forces two selected entities to join together and remain connected. With the Edit Sketch mode enabled, I will first demonstrate how to create this relation between a line and an endpoint. First, I will select the line on the left. Then I will hold the control key and click the top endpoint of the line on the right. And the relations that can be added appear in the context toolbar near the selections, as well as in the property manager in the add relations box.
Notice that coincident is shown in bold text in the property manager, meaning that SolidWorks is suggesting this type of relation for the selected entities. I'll go ahead and select coincident from the property manager, and the line on the right moves, and the selected endpoint joins with the line on the left. I'll click the green check to exit the property manager. This coincident relation will now remain in the sketch unless it's deleted. And if I drag the line on the left, notice that the endpoint on the other line remains coincident. If the relations are not appearing in the graphics area, they can be made visible by clicking on the Hide Show Items icon in the Heads Up toolbar and turning on View Sketch Relations. If I want to delete this relation, I can click on the icon in the graphics area and press the Delete key or I can right-click on the icon and select Delete from the menu. With the relation deleted, I can now move the endpoint of the line on the right away from the line on the left. The next type of relation is the merge relation. This forces the endpoints to join together and remain connected. To set this relation, I'll click the top endpoint of the line on the left, hold down the Control key, and select the top endpoint of the line on the right and select Merge Points from the Context Toolbar. The lines move to join these two endpoints. If I attempt to drag where these endpoints meet, both lines change angle to keep the relation. Instead of clicking the green check in the Property Manager, I'll press the Escape key to exit the property, and I'll use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-Z to undo the relation. A parallel relation can be added between two lines in a sketch. To add this relation, I'll select the line on the left, control click the line on the right, and Parallel can be selected from the Context Toolbar or the Property Manager. I'll select it, and the lines update in the Graphics area to create this relation. If I move an endpoint on one of the lines, the other line moves with it to maintain its parallel relation. To undo this relation, I'll click the Undo button at the top of the SolidWorks interface. A perpendicular relation can be added between two lines in a sketch. To add this relation, I'll select the line on the left, control click the line on the right, and select Perpendicular from the Property Manager. The lines update in the graphics area, and a perpendicular relation is created. Depending on the sizes and positions of the lines, they may not be intersecting when the relation is added. If they aren't intersecting, I can move the lines to more clearly show the perpendicular relation. I'll delete this relation and move one of the lines so that they are no longer intersecting. In the next video, I'll demonstrate some additional relations that apply to lines in a sketch. Now that the coincident, merge points, parallel, and perpendicular relations have been established, I'll discuss some additional sketch relations. The collinear relation forces two lines to exist along the same axis allowing the lines to overlap if necessary. To add this relation, I'll select both lines and click Make Collinear from the Context Toolbar. The lines now overlap and exist along the same axis. I'll drag the endpoints of one of the lines downward to separate them, and a dashed line appears in the graphics area to show that these two lines maintain a collinear relation. I'll delete the relation, and drag the endpoints of the line to move it out of its current position. The horizontal relation can be applied to a number of instances. It can be applied to one line, multiple lines, or between two or more endpoints. First, I will make both lines horizontal by selecting them using a box selection, and select Horizontal from the Context Toolbar. The lines update, and the angle of the lines cannot be changed. I'll undo this relation by pressing Ctrl-Z on the keyboard. And now I'll make the two bottom endpoints of the two lines horizontal. I'll Ctrl-Select both endpoints. Select Horizontal from the Context Toolbar, and the points now lie in the same horizontal axis. If I move one of the endpoints, both endpoints move together in the horizontal axis. Now I'll delete this relation to move on. 
the vertical relation performs similar to the horizontal relation, with the selected entities constrained to a vertical orientation instead of a horizontal orientation. The same types of entities can be selected. I can select a single line and make it vertical. I can select both lines and make them vertical. Or I can select two endpoints and constrain them to a common vertical axis. I'll undo this relation. Lines can also be made equal in length by setting the equal relation. I'll control click both lines and select equal from the context toolbar. The lines update and are now equal in length. To demonstrate how the lines maintain equal length, I'll set a fixed relation to one of the endpoints, which fixes the selected entity in space. Now if I drag an endpoint on one of the lines, the other line will change length to maintain the equal length. I'll delete both of these relations. Make the lines different lengths. And move on to another relation type. The midpoint relation sets a point on a sketch entity coincident to the midpoint of a line. To demonstrate this relation, I'll select the endpoint of a line and control select the other line and click on the midpoint relation in the context toolbar. The lines update their positions and the endpoint of one line is now coincident with the midpoint on the other line. I'll undo this relation. And to demonstrate that sketch entities other than endpoints can be constrained using the midpoint relation, I'll add a point to the line on the right. And I can add a midpoint relation between this point and the other line. The lines update and intersect at the midpoint. I'll undo the relation as well as the point added to the line. The last type of sketch relation I'll demonstrate in this video is the symmetric sketch relation. This requires that a center line be used to mirror two sketch entities across that center line. I'll add another line to the sketch to have three elements to choose from. And I'll select the line in the center of the three and convert it to a construction line, which is required to create the symmetric relation. Now I'll select two endpoints on the outside lines, as well as the center line. Select the Make Symmetric Relation from the context toolbar, and the lines update with this new constraint. If I move an endpoint on one of the lines, the endpoint across the construction line moves to maintain its symmetry. The sketch relation can also be added to lines, circles, arcs, ellipses, and other sketch entities as long as they are divided by a construction line. This completes the relations that can be added between lines, and in the next video, I'll demonstrate some relations that are available when defining curved sketch entities.